Hi, uh, I'm Jeannie Hewlin, and I'm the artist of the show behind me, which is um, Gibberish is a series that I've been working on for several years. Um, and we can kind of walk through the space as I'm talking. Um, so this iteration of Gibberish has been a, um, a uh, really wanting to kind of capture this kind of a visual pleasure of a um, of what it's like to kind of go up in the mountains and see like fog above you um, but then flip that and actually I'm really thinking about like a riverbed that goes above your head when clouds are um, formed it's basically clay particles that that get captured into the atmosphere and then they get uh, covered with water with condensation and then they start to rain or create fog or create clouds and so I was just thinking about ceramics in this kind of vast um, geological and atmospheric aspect of that but then at the same time kind of flipping some other aspects of how we uh, think about fake materials in our world. So all of the rocks um, are that are on these plinths are all made um, from uh, plastic, um, plastic fake rocks that are designed to cover your mechanical boxes outside your house and electrical boxes. And I always think it's weird that we always try to like, f like fake a material um, versus making some other type of solution. Those are also made from petro materials. So I also wanted to kind of convert the um, convert this fake material into its real geological form, which is clay and minerals, which is what all of this is made out of um, on the top, and the top and the bo very bottom. Um, so the top are all cone 10 porcelain, um, and so I made a mold of the object, I slip casted it, which is a liquid slip, and then I fired it to cone 10, which is 2,000, 380 degrees and then um, glaze them with traditional ceramic materials, traditional ceramic glazes. So the first layer is a chino and then the second layer, layer is an aribe and then the third layer is a celadon and then the fourth layer is a temaku. And I liked the Temeku because both of its history in ceramics, I mean, these, these glazes have been used for thousands of years. Um, but the one on the top reminded me of like an oil kind of petro relation, you know, basically relating back to the plastics. Also, the, you know, how we're dealing with, you know, global uh, uh, climate change and how the petro industry has really exacerbated that. While the celadon, the blue celadon is really like an ice blue, so it's like as if the mountains are icy, and then the aribe is more like the grassy um, uh, layer of our earth, and then the um, shino is more of the kind of rock and uh, formation. And then at the bottom is a mirror image of every, uh, every single one that's on top. So this object and this object are the same as you go. And those are all terracotta, which is like flipping another level of landscape where if you were upside down, you'd have another kind of equal layer of these rocks. Um, and then they're all kind of, uh, the terracotta are all um, uh, supported by a, uh, by copper um, and so the copper is like a, basically some of it's come from an electrical wire so it's also just kind of another level of just like flipping ideas of um, the electrical boxes the electrical wire as well as the fact that I'm really interested in alchemy and how alchemy really the the um, the area of alchemy um, was the air was what then became science our basically scientific knowledge and so alchemists were the ones that were doing all the scientific experiments to figure out various ways to change say water into wine or gold or whatever um, but it also was the um, area the the alchemists were the ones that were 
um, in Western society trying to figure out how the Chinese had gotten porcelain and so they were kind of uh, stuck in dungeons and forced to figure out a porcelain body. They used terracotta at some point and covered it with uh, different types of slips. They used bone ash. They used all these different things. So it's another like kind of nod to the ceramic history. Um, yeah, and so the moss is really more of like another touch of the natural. And so really bringing in the natural as well as all of these wood, um, uh, birch wood, plywood um, objects. They, I cut, I cut, I basically um, outlined each one of these rocks in different sections. Like, so these were all laid together, scanned that image into the computer, um, and then did basically digitally uh, altered them into these table pedestal forms um, and cut them out in CNC. And then even these lines are the same lines pulled from these and then put vertically. So there's a lot of kind of uh, visual referencing back on top of uh, each other. And then just th what was really nice in this space in particular was, uh, was just how when I lit the lights, the rocks just really continue into the, the walls with these shadows, which was really, um, really a nice surprise that I wasn't necessarily expecting. And so each of these objects, there's about 12,000 of these is what my estimation is. And so, and each one are individually hand tied at the bottom and hand tied to the ceiling. And they are, um, they're all terracotta, or most of them are terracotta. There's a few other materials. Um, and they're uh, glazed with various bronze and gold-like glaze. Uh, again, kind of another alchemy reference, um, as well as some referencing back to my older work of just using clay and it's really its natural material, just kind of pulling the chunks of the material apart and then, um, and then gla firing them and glazing them. And then there's about 60,000 yards of string um, and this is all copper thread. Uh, that's not, it's thread, it's not copper. Um, it just again, to kind of have that, this raining effect above your head or like I said, a riverbed mm -hmm. that exists. So, so that's mostly it, you know? Um, I, I started this work in 2018. I started a, a section of this. This is all new since 2021, but um, but I, I, I made only about six of these together and I really wanted, at that point, a entire landscape. Like I wanted to make a landscape like this. Um, I went to, I, I did a sabbatical at West Africa, Ghana, and was there for a year, and then came back and was an associate dean in Fulbright College at University of Fayetteville. So didn't have enough time to really build this out. So when I was offered this space, um, I just kind of really got into studio and was was um, was really excited about the opportunity to actually show like this in this kind of glass space and actually work with a gallery that was just amazing. Um, putting uh, a system on the ceiling for this to happen. Um, so I, I've just, I'm very grateful. Van Buren is, this space is just really a wonderful arts on Main. Uh, planning, lots of planning. Um, and then also needing, you need a lot of help to some extent. So putting these up, you know, it was about eight solid, or I don't know, eight or six, I think it was eight solid days with like six people helping put it up. And so, and you know, I don't normally show locally. And so it's really nice to have the opportunity to be able to drive back and forth from Fayetteville and actually do this show. If I was in Chicago or Providence or somewhere else, it's harder to actually live in a space this long um, so far away from your house. So I, I you know, I, I assume that when the show goes elsewhere, it, the iteration might be very different because of both the site specific aspect of being able to install this as well as um, 
as well as people and bodies to kind of make it happen. But um, but planning is everything, really understanding what you needed. I mean, we constructed some ceiling uh, hanging devices that are permanently installed in this space now. Um, and uh, and that was how we had to think through that in advance of coming here, so. Well, I mean, artists make art for everyone and those people in particular that you're talking about that are intimidated and this is all about like really right now pure enjoyment about like the natural landscape inside of a space uh you know i had several people that told me on their way back to fayetteville they really looked at the mountains differently as they were driving and i really that's what i want and then during the opening there was a a couple and the woman was opening her mask and blowing on the rocks to make them move and I was far away looking at it and I was like that is just exactly what I want and so I I cornered her later and said said I saw you do that and that was amazing she's like oh and I was like no that's exactly like if I make you like move in some way you know, both internally, psychologically, emotionally, or even physically, I feel like I've won, you know, like that's what I want. I've always said about what's really great about 3D work is that you physically have to move around the work. And I've always appreciated that um, as well as it, the relationship to the body. And so I, it was really lovely. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I had no idea. I mean, I had an idea of what this looked like. It's not what, and it, it it's different than what it is, right? And so, um, but you have to really kind of continue to focus on, again, that like how how things evolve, you know? And in a research studio practice, you have, a, you know, an expectation of what you're going to get and you can set up all these different rules and parameters to get to that place, but then you have to be willing for that change to happen both in sight, like again, this will look very different in a whole different space, you know? And so, um, but I'm, I'm probably, I mean, I'm very pleased with this, again, because I was able to kind of tweak it and make it work over time and come back and do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. and. That was super helpful to this whole process so that I could get it to a place where it was, you know, in some ways I feel like it's better than what I had imagined, you know. Um, there's always things that you want a little bit more of, like I'd like more rocks, but then at the same time I'm super happy with where it is, you know, and so it's uh, it's always that. And then like what the next uh, um, space is going to look like, like I'm really excited about if I could get a bigger space and show this work where some of these objects could be spread out so that you walk through them like a labyrinth. That would be amazing. Um, I'm, you know, and and how this cloud would form differently in that space. Um, so, like how this work can also, in parts, change. Um, you know, and I always I always start out with. Uh, thinking that I'm just gonna be a singular object maker like I just want to make make an object and then make another object and my husband always laughs at me because I'm I always go in with like I'm gonna make small objects that are easy to ship and like all this stuff and then like I come back several days later and I'm like yeah so I think I'm gonna make 75 of those objects <laughs> So, you know, I think I'm always, I, it, everything always gets bigger and really everything that I do, uh, I joke because I'm from Texas and so it's like bigger, bigger is better, you know, go big or go home. And so, um, but you know, that's just how I am. So, yeah. Well, I, it's really nice for, you know, people think of me as just an administrator. <laughs> and so it's really nice to be seen as an artist because that is my, that is who I am as a person and is my passion. It is my love. It is why I've dedicated myself, not just only to my own practice, but to 
the practice of others. And so, um, so ha being able to like be in this space with people that know me, alumni over the years and everything like has just really, um, really, it was really lovely. The opening was wonderful and, you know, more people are still coming and the show is up through March. So, um, I think, uh, being seen as like how complex as a, of a person I am is really, is really, I'm very grateful for.